This video is now in session, and as of today, uh, Monday, November 15th, Biden, ha President Biden has finally signed on the 550 or so billion dollars of uh, money that is meant for hard infrastructure. So this is, I guess, part one of two of uh, Biden's Build Back Better agenda. The other half, which is the more ambitious $1.85 trillion uh, spend-in bill, or I guess budget bill, is related to more of the soft elements of infrastructure. But today we're going to talk more about this, about the tangible, um, the the about the past bill, because... <clears throat> And this is something that's taken a while for the Democrats uh, to implement. If we look at the Biden administration, they first proposed these two measures in March of 2021. It seems like a very long time ago, as is everything these days. Seems like a long time ago uh, since um, a story, uh, uh, an event, um, a specific event. So. Uh, yeah, it's been like seven months since Biden first introduced the infrastructure bill, and now only now is it getting passed. Now, technically, this could have been solved by early September, that a bill could have been passed by early September, but Biden pulled off, uh, pulled off an inaccurate political calculation by choosing to tie the infrastructure bill with the budget plan. If he did not tie those two bills together, and if he just passed them separately, then the Democrats would have had a much easier time selling this bill uh, to states like New Jersey and Virginia, and we could have possibly seen a different election result in both of those states, particularly in the state legislature. So only now is it getting passed. It was pa and the only reason why this has passed is because of the New Jersey and Virginia gubernatorial elections, which sounded an alarm bell for the Democratic Party. Now that he has passed this bill, let's take a look inside of it, who benefits most from this bill, uh, how the Democrats should be implementing this in the face of 2022, and who benefits um, and how this would, I guess, affect certain competitive states in the 2022 election. So let's first talk about what's inside this bill. This is $579 billion worth of money that's being spent into American infrastructure, and part of it includes $66 billion in Amtrak and $49 billion for public transit. So $66 billion in Amtrak, um, that's, or I guess, general rail projects, that's what the biggest investment in uh, the train companies for since several decades. Um, and then we have $109 billion in road and bridge projects. So uh, this would go towards airports, towards uh, cargo and waterways. If you know uh, the Mi Mississippi River's levee system, it is incredibly old. That will be improved by uh, this bill. And then if we look at the hundreds of bridges that cross the Mississippi River and other large waterways, especially in states like Kentucky and Tennessee uh, and in, um, I guess, Kansas, uh, or rather Illinois. These are all states that heavily rely on truck driving uh, through those roads, and those roads uh, buckle under pressure. So, um, yeah, it's, it's only fit in for a lot of that money to go into those kinds of areas. There's $201 billion ad allocated to water, sewer, power, and environmental remediation projects. So this means um, more towards climate change. It also means uh, projects related to energy and coal. And then you have $65 billion for broadband. This means expanding internet to more rural states. Um, <clears throat> Something that was originally proposed by the Democrats, especially by more of the uh, progressive Democrats, was a tax, an increased tax, uh, an increased cap for the wealthy, and as well as increased an increased corporate tax rate. Both of those are not part of this infrastructure bill, largely due to Senator Manchin, who wanted 
uh, who did not agree with either of these um, either of these proposals, and thus it is left out in this bill. And then you also have forty-seven billion dollars uh, to put uh, for resilience projects, which is more directly related to climate change. This is something that initially was in jeopardy, but eventually Senator Manchin did approve this. And then you also have IRS. Um, basically, this is how it's going to be funded, which is that the IRS will receive some funding so that they can crack down on tax avoidance. Uh, on both tax evasion and accidental tax avoidance and then you also have um and yeah pretty much you have uh the exclusion of human infrastructure which is more seen in the budget plan and you also have no funding for or at least no major funding for housing so those are the things that are inside his bill now uh there are ways to both defend and go against this bill ways to defend this bill this is like this is something that's been thought by both parties for at this point a decade it's been a decade since this issue first uh rose and only now is it actually getting uh, getting a solution um so that's a really good thing especially for the democratic party since this is something really bipartisan and that benefits both sides of the political aisle it's a political win for the democrats to actually uh i guess have this issue on infrastructure passed now there is a way to go against this bill which is that it's spending too much money uh in a time period when um inflation is up and that uh, a lot of americans are just not having problems with infrastructure or rather that they have problems bigger than infrastructure problems related to inflation problems related to taxes to education and to more cultural issues the, uh, this bill does not solve any of those issues and while it is useful it is, does not come at the right time and uh, and it is not ready for uh, the current political moment so those are the arguments for and against the, uh, this bill um <clears throat> Now, as to who would benefit the most uh, from the $576 trillion uh, plan, $579, not $579 trillion, that is a lot of money, $579 billion, um, that who would benefit the most from it? Uh, obviously, every state benefits from it, especially the Northeast area, which will see funding for the Gateway Project along with Amtrak. Uh, and then you also have some of these middle states that will receive funding related to broadband. But actually, the biggest winners are West Virginia the, and the more rural parts of the United States. West Virginia, in particular, is a winner because Joe Manchin um, essentially has a, such a large... Uh, they he has such a large voice in this bill to the point where he can make it so that a lot of the funding gets allocated to West Virginians. So they're a major winner in this bill. Uh, you have the Northeast. They're not a winner or a loser because they kind of expected this kind of, this funding. Um, <clears throat> And even with this funding, it's not like uh, the Northeast would surpass would surpass the rest of the United States in the quality of its infrastructure. It would probably match it. But the real winners are rural states in Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Alaska, um, and as well as Vermont. All of these states win because uh, because of broadband. Broadband is a major issue in a lot of these states. Connectivity uh, prevents st students from being educated from receiving good education and broadband also prevents uh, good health care services it also prevents um, e efficient employment in businesses that rely on the cloud so that's the, the those are i guess the major winners uh, of this infrastructure bill if we look at the total funding obviously um, states like more urban states would have more funding, uh, but something ma two major states to look at are Pennsylvania and Illinois. Both of these states are um, receiving a fair share of money, uh, in, both in population and as well as in total. Um, <clears throat> You can see here that in total, Illinois is projected to get $17.8 billion, and the same applies to Pennsylvania. So why is that important? Uh, the truth is that 
Both of these states are actually going to be pretty major in the 2022 election, especially Pennsylvania, where there will be competitive districts in the House and there is a competitive Senate seat uh, that could be um, that could be held by the uh, far right Republican, a moderate Republican, a moderate Democrat or a progressive Democrat. Um, so this is a major race to watch. And as a result, anything that helps or anything that goes into Pennsylvania could certainly affect the 2022 election. So uh, that's the major state to look out uh, look at when it comes to this infrastructure bill. If we look at other states, um, Arizona, you could potentially make a justification for it because they are getting some money. But if we compare that to population, it's somewhat average. Um, uh, I'm trying to really figure out. New Hampshire could also. Uh, be a state to watch based on population because that is um, a competitive Senate seat. Now, even though Chris Sununu has stated he is not going to run in the Senate seat and challenge Maggie Hassan, this seat will still be competitive because New Hampshire is a competitive state and it's in 2022, which is expected to be a year that does not favor Democrats. Uh, if we look at the totals, though, the major winner, I guess you could say, is the southeast in Virginia. Along the east coast, you can see that major funding is going into highways, into roads, bridges, airports, and as well as public transit. Because what we're expected to see is that because $66 billion is invested in Amtrak, Amtrak will most likely start, uh, start more services in North Carolina and then expand into more of the American South America, into Southeast America. So those are the major benefiters of Biden's infrastructure bill. Now, how will this affect 2022? We already stated that Pennsylvania, um, that, that will certainly affect Pen Pennsylvania's Senate race. But how will it affect it? Um, it depends if Biden gets infrastructure, or, de or rather, it depends if this infrastructure bill can be it can see tangible results uh, within one year. Now we all know that American construction construction in, Amer in America is kind of abysmal. <laughs> like it takes a very long time for construction to actually get started and it takes an even longer time to get it finished because of all the bureaucracy and because of the labor laws. Um, and as a result, a lot of times what we find is that uh, infrastructure projects take like half a decade at least to complete. So for Biden to see like a, for there to be a tangible uh, result from this infrastructure bill within one year, the Democrats really have to urge a lot of these states to move quickly on infrastructure, to use that money to start planning immediately and to come up with some kinds of plans. Um, <clears throat> And that will be especially so it's like in states like Pennsylvania and in Wisconsin and in Georgia and in Florida, where all of these dish, uh, Senate seats will be competitive. It will also be important in North Carolina because North Carolina is actually going to be one of the biggest winners of this infrastructure bill. And there is a competitive seat that will be occurring in the 2022 election. Uh, Richard Burr, who is the incumbent senator, is not running for re-election, which means it's an open field, and it's a seat that the Democrats could certainly win uh, in 2022, even if the national tides are not in their favor. Uh, Virginia is also crucial. What we're seeing is that um, we still have yet to see what the outcome of Virginia's congressional delegation will be after redistricting, but there will definitely be at least one competitive seat, which means that infrastructure could heavily affect that election, especially if it is along I-95 in the, uh, in, um, I guess, the Fredericksburg region. If there, if there is a competitive district over there, somewhat similar to Abigail Spanberg's current, um, Spanberg's current seat, then that would be a major issue. Um, <clears throat> 
that at least the Democrats could champion on. Uh, other things, other races, Illinois, there's actually a potential, um, there is a somewhat competitive seat uh, that currently Cherry Bustos ho holds. The Democrats are planning to gerrymander that seat to make it into a likely Democratic seat, but nonetheless, it could still be competitive in 2022. If it is so, then infrastructure could actually benefit the Democrats here, because uh, in Western Illinois, in the more rural areas, uh, in the more exurban areas of Illinois, uh, infrastructure is a key issue that affects many, um, uh, many people of Illinois because uh, it's a state that heavily relies on truckers, on manufacturing, uh, the transportation of manufacturing, and as well as distribution centers. So that's another area to look at. Uh, Georgia, I the uh, Georgia is like questionable. Um, yeah, that's really the major uh, major states that you'll see in the 2022 election. For Michigan, it could potentially be a, a change for the Democratic Party, but um, uh, a change that goes in favor of the Democratic Party. But like the competitive districts there are held by individuals who, regardless of the infrastructure bill, would most likely win their re-elections in 2022. So uh, that that's a th we can kind of dismiss Michigan for now. But those are the major states. Um, or those are the states that truly benefit uh, from infrastructure and could. So I uh, certainly see a change in the 2022 election, but it's a little bit too early. Um, these kinds of issues haven't really been spotlighted yet since there's still one year left till the election. There's 359 days left, or I guess when this video uploads, 357 days left until the election. Um, but... Uh, it is finally a win for the Democratic Party because they haven't had anything in Washington. They didn't really pass anything in Washington, but in Washington, besides the American Rescue Plan, um, until now. And the American Rescue Plan, what we saw was that that bill only lasted in the American spotlight and the political spotlight for about a month before it started dying off. Um, and that's primarily because it was a short-term issue, but. This, this is more of a long-term issue that the Democrats could truly champion on, but unfortunately, we'll just, uh, it may be too long for the Democrats, maybe a little bit too long-term, given, given that the election is just one year away. But we'll, uh, we'll uh, keep on looking at this as it progresses, and we also have the soft infrastructure bill, the budget plan, which is supposed to be about $1.85 trillion as of now, uh, so we'll also be looking at that and how it will impact the American sentiment uh, for the 2022 elections. So yeah, until then, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This video is now adjourned, and I'll see you in the next one.